Welcome back to the Hardware Unboxed News Corner. It feels like every week when I say, yeah, we'll be making these videos on a more consistent basis, I never actually get around to making them on a more consistent basis. Anyway, we're here this week for a roundup of all the news topics. Let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the story about Zen 3. Get this one out the way because for some reason, lots of people are very interested in any small little detail about Zen 3. This one is honestly a bit of a non-story and feels like we've been covering very similar points for months now, but we'll get into it anyway. Basically, as part of a video AMD posted to their social channels about the launch of AMD's Ryzen 3000 XT processors, which we reviewed by the way, check out that video if you haven't already, Lisa Su briefly spoke about Zen 3 processors and here's what she had to say. As you know with Ryzen, we're always on a journey, a journey to push the highest performance that we can for our users and our fans. So Zen 3 is exactly that. Zen 3 is looking great in the labs. We're on track to launch later this year and I can't wait to tell you more about it. That's basically the story. Zen 3 is in the labs, it's looking great. I'd be surprised if AMD said anything different and you know, it's on track for later this year. Like I mentioned last time I covered Zen 3 news, we still don't know for sure whether Zen 3 will launch on the desktop in 2020. We know there are two product families that will use Zen 3, both Vermeer on the desktop and Milan for Epic Service CPUs. And it's possible AMD will look to hit their Zen 3 in 2020 target with Milan only, but we'll have to see how that one plays out in the coming months. A much more interesting story in my opinion is the recent leak of an AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3995X CPU, which has been photographed by someone and posted to Chipel, then corroborated by video cards. The actual picture isn't very exciting, it just shows the text AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3995X in a usual Threadripper package, but there is some additional information here. According to video cards, AMD are allegedly set to release a Threadripper Pro series on July 14th, and it seems this date is also aligning with the teaser from Lenovo about new workstation PCs. This could be a coincidence of course, but it's an interesting note to make at the very least. This would also be one week after the release of Ryzen 3000 XT processors. So what's in store for Threadripper Pro? Well, by the sounds of it, it appears to be a variant of Threadripper that introduces more features from AMD's Epic lineup, presumably with a higher price tag to bridge that gap between actual Epic processors and the more consumer workstation Threadripper line. So the rumor from video cards is suggesting eight channel memory in line with Epic and up from the four channels you get with regular Threadripper, as well as two terabytes of memory support up from 256 gigabytes. The Pro series is also alleged to include features that mirror what is available with Ryzen Pro, so presumably this would include the additional security and management features you get with the Ryzen Pro line. These features aren't that exciting for enthusiasts, but can be critical for those using workstations or processors in a business environment. If Threadripper Pro does feature 8-channel memory, it will likely require a different motherboard than TRX40, given that chipset and those boards are designed for quad-channel memory. While rumors of a TRX80 and WRX80 chipset were debunked by Anantec earlier this year, maybe these chipsets are actually gonna become a thing. That is just speculation though. What I will say is releasing a 3995X with eight channel memory makes a lot of sense. Assuming we're still looking at a 64 core Zen 2 processor, having that many cores is limited by just four memory channels. And for some workstation applications, there would be significant benefits if that chip was allowed to access eight channels. No doubt it will be a niche and expensive platform, but at the same time, it does make more sense than a 3000 XT CPU, for example. Intel has provided an update on their Thunderbolt 4 technology, which is destined to land later this year alongside the first Tiger Lake CPUs. When Intel first teased Thunderbolt 4, it didn't sound like a significant update, and that has basically been confirmed with the full set of information we now have about the technology. So Thunderbolt 4 has the same bandwidth as Thunderbolt 3, 40 gigabits per second, which is also the same maximum bandwidth available with the new USB 4 spec through USB Gen 3x2. And yes, USB naming is still pretty confusing. It also has many of the same features, such as the use of USB-C connectors and support for display streams. But there are some notable differences. Thunderbolt 4 now mandates support for four lanes of PCIe 3.0 connectivity on the PC side. Previously, PCs integrating Thunderbolt 3 could choose between two or four lane support, with two lanes limiting the usefulness of devices like eGPUs. Thunderbolt 4 now specifies four lanes as the minimum. 
Display connectivity is also upgraded to support two 4K displays through a single Thunderbolt 4 port up from one display. Cable length will increase to 2 meters, with Intel also working on 5 to 50 meter optical cables. New security features are built in too. Like you'd expect from a new Thunderbolt standard, it's backwards compatible and also incorporates USB 4 support. So any Thunderbolt 4 port should give a wide array of possible connectivity. Unfortunately, Intel are using the same logo for both Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. So it'll be hard to visually distinguish between version 3 and version 4 just from the port alone. And this continues to be a problem with USB devices as well. The whole USB-C ecosystem is pretty screwed up at the moment, I think. Alongside the final specifications for Thunderbolt 4, Intel are also releasing a set of controllers. Thunderbolt 4 will be integrated into Tiger Lake processors, but for systems that want Thunderbolt 4 without using Tiger Lake, there will be several 8000 series controllers for hosts and devices. These will be available at the end of the year, so it might be a while before we see Thunderbolt 4 devices hit the market, similar to what happened around the launch of Thunderbolt 3. Normally, I don't cover financial results on this channel because I find them horribly boring, but this story did surprise me a bit this week. Nvidia's market cap has surpassed that of Intel. As of the time of producing this video, Nvidia was sitting on a market cap of around 259 billion US dollars, while Intel were at 247 billion. This represents a pretty significant milestone for Nvidia given they have historically been the smaller company and continue to post far lower revenue numbers. For 2019 as an example, Intel's revenue was around $72 billion, compared to just $12 billion for Nvidia. However, market cap isn't based on revenue, it's the total value of all shares in a company. With Nvidia's stock rising from around $100 US at the start of 2017 to now around $420, US, this has led to such a huge rise in that market cap figure. Intel, meanwhile, have only grown from $37 to $58 in the same period. And this does say a lot about the success and position of each company over the last few years. Meanwhile, for those interested, AMD sits at a market cap of around $67 billion, so well behind the other major players. At the same time, AMD stock has risen the most of the three companies percentage-wise in the same period. AMD's successes in terms of actual products definitely are translating as well into those stock market values. Both AMD and Nvidia released new game bundles this week. On the AMD side, buyers of select Ryzen 3000 processors or systems using a Ryzen 3000 CPU will be eligible to claim a free copy of upcoming Ubisoft title Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Of course, like all bundles, you'll need to buy from a participating retailer. Only some CPUs are eligible though, ranging from the Ryzen 7 3700X through to the Ryzen 9 3950X, including the new XT models in between. Ryzen 5 buyers, and that includes the 3600 XT, are not eligible. Also able to claim this game are buyers of Ryzen 4000 laptops using H-series SKUs, like the Ryzen 7 4800H or Ryzen 9 4900HS. Again, Ryzen 5 4000 CPUs are not eligible, and this promotion will run until October 3. On the NVIDIA side, they are bundling Death Stranding on PC with select GeForce RTX graphics cards between now and July 29th. So, a bit of a shorter promotion there. It appears that all RTX GPUs between the RTX 2060 and RTX 2080 Ti are eligible, as well as their laptop variants. However, GTX GPUs like the GTX 1660 Ti have been left out. I'm sure that's because those GTX products don't support DLSS 2.0, which is one of the major features that is in Death Stranding that Nvidia wants to push. Usual stuff here too about eligible retailers while stocks last, all that sort of thing. A couple of weeks ago, Apple announced that they were transitioning away from Intel CPUs to their own Apple Silicon for their devices, thus transitioning from x86 to ARM. What seemed to be lost in this messaging though was that not only are Apple set to transition away from Intel on the CPU side, they are also set to ditch AMD on the GPU side. A slide that was featured in one of Apple's WWDC sessions shows what will happen with Apple Silicon Mac GPUs. Under Intel-based Macs, you can see GPUs from Intel, Nvidia, and AMD. On the other side, under Apple Silicon, Apple are only listing Apple GPUs. 
This suggests that Apple will ditch AMD Radeon GPUs for devices that transition across to new Apple Silicon. And this is a major development for Apple. While not as significant for laptop parts, which tended to only use lower power GPUs, this is a bigger deal for Apple's workstation and iMac lines, which will eventually transition to Apple Silicon. These desktops have used powerful Radeon GPUs for a while, especially the Mac Pro. So transitioning to an Apple discrete GPU, as these slides suggest, is a big ask and it'll be interesting to see what Apple are able to achieve there. That said, the slide is also not exactly forthcoming with information and it remains unclear whether Apple Silicon computers will still support other GPUs if added in or when that sort of transition will make. It doesn't sound like those sort of workstation or desktop parts will be transitioning to Apple Silicon as soon as some of the more mobile processors. This final story is unfortunately a sad one. MSI CEO Charles Chiang passed away a few days ago after falling from a company building in Taiwan. The circumstances surrounding the 56-year-old's death are still under investigation, but the news is certainly shocking and very sad for everyone close to MSI. In a statement to Tom's Hardware, MSI said, Earlier today, MSI GM and CEO Charles Chiang passed away. Having been a part of the company for more than 20 years, he made outstanding contributions and was admired by his colleagues. Mr. Chiang was a respected leader in the MSI family and helped pave the way for the brand's success. We are all deeply saddened by the news and are mourning the loss of Mr. Chiang. He will be deeply missed by the entire team. Chiang joined MSI back in 1999 and has been with the company in various roles since. So he's had a significant influence on shaping MSI into the significant market presence that it is today. So our condolences do go out to the family and all those at MSI. And that's it for this week's News Corner. You can subscribe for our news roundups that happen every so often, no promises being made this time. Uh, as always, you can also support the channel directly through Patreon. Links to that are in the description below. You can sign up, get access to our monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, Discord chat, all that sort of thing. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.